Rivalries, rivalries. I-70 open to through traffic cards and Royals. Bohart smoking seven major league games, hitting 514. So we figured we'd compare him to another great Bo. It's Bo Jackson, Bodie Hart, actually, compared to Vincent Jackson. Uh, oh, by the way, Jackson got him by about uh, 2,780 rushing yards, but uh, nobody cares uh, here because Bo Hart is killing the baseball, although here in the top third, that's a routine play to Carlos Beltran, and well, he's 0 for 2 at this point, but there will be more from Bo because Bo knows highlights. Top four, Jimmy Edmonds, 10 homers in 20 games with the cards down 1 0. That is a solo shot off of Daryl May. Martinez. Top five, two out. We're tied at two. And there's our hero again, right field. Aaron Guile flat out. And oh, you're breaking my heart. Bo 0 for 4 is average all the way down to 462. Bottom seven, one out. Ken Harvey, right field. Eduardo Perez and a little shaky D by the Cardinals. That would start it off. That's an error. You think that's an error? Yeah, I, I think we'd give him one. So two out now. Inning should have been over. It's a 3-2 KC lead. Runners to second and third. Desi Relaford, ground ball second base through the wickets. Hart not only with an offer, but he also can't make the routine play. Three errors for the Cardinals as the Royals win it 6-3. to three. It's the Windy City matchup. Cubs and Chai Sox top four. One nothing Cubs. Sammy Sosa off of Danny Wright looking for his first win of the season. And Maglio Ordonez trying to help get it sliding grab. Top five bases loaded. Sammy, nothing. That's the right stuff. Wright gets him his second strike out of the day. Wright had three of those. Top seven in a 1-1 game. He walks Corey Patterson with the bases or with second and third to load the bases for Sammy. You know, last year you just don't do this. But this year, it's the right decision. Tom Gordon comes in and gets him. Sosa goes down. Bottom seven, Carlos Lee off of Matt Clement and Souvenir. 2-1 Sox, number 12 of the season for Lee. He was two for four. Top nine, it is three to one. Gordon in some trouble, loaded the bases with one out, so here comes Billy Koch. And Billy the Kid, not this time. Sammy, deep enough to score the run as Tom Goodwin tags and scores. RBI number 35 for Sosa. He was 0 for 4, but still it's a 3-2 Sox lead. Next batter, Moises Alou. Runners on the corners, and that is a seeing eye single. Mark Rosalonic in. Alou ties it at 3 with RBI number 48. Koch blows his third save. Bottom nine, Jose Valentin off of Antonio Alfonseca. That ball hit hard in the right center field. Way back, he looks up. You can't put it on the ball. Yes, in stereo, the walk-off job for Valentin. I rule. Knows it as soon as it's hits the bat. 11th home run of the year. Koch off the hook. Sox win it 4-3. From the second city to the Big Apple, Mets and Yankees in the Bronx, top second. Yanks up 3-2. Jose Reyes off David Wells. Reyes getting greedy. Going to try to stretch it into a double. He's trying to pick up a double. And he's in there. How about that? All right, so now two outs. Ray is still on second. Roger Cedeno making the move pay off. Ray is coming in to score, ties it at three. Bottom second, two on and two out. Game tied at three. Art Howard says, Jay Wong so be smart. First base open. Sun decides to pitch to Jason Giambi. He wasn't smart. Giambi's making it pay. Juan Rivera and Alfonso Soriano coming around to score. Yanks up 5-3. And Suss is, yeah. You can hang that one on me. Top third, bases loaded, one out. Tony Clark into the 5-4-3 DP. So Wells out of the jam, still 5-3 Yanks. 5-3 in the six now. Wells to Jeremy Burnett, who shatters his bat right back at Wells. Almost hit him in his head. And that takes us back to this 2000 World Series game two. Remember Roger Clemens with the bat and throws it, nearly hits Mike Piazza. Friday, instead of throwing it back at Burnett, Wells rings him up. Burnett's his bat, well, he won't be able to use that one again. Top nine, Mariano Rivera, three straight days pitching, so he was off. Dan Maselli just in, closed things out. Ty Wigginson over to Robin Ventura. And they make the play. Wells, four runs on 12 hits over six innings. He picks up his fourth straight win as the Yanks take it 6 4. Marlins at the Bow Sox. Unbelievable stuff. Bottom one, it's 1 0 Marlins. Carl Pavano to Johnny Damon inside. First and down the line at 7 20 Eastern Time. Damon on his way to second base. He is in with a double. And here we go. Next batter, Todd Walker. Solid single back up the box. That'll play Damon. We are tied at one walker. Four for five on the day. Drove in three. Now hitting 310. Then it's Noma with a man at first. Stroking it. Off the monster. 
Double for Garcia Parra now hits safely in 30 consecutive games. Manny Ramirez, the fourth batter for the Sox, and this one looks like it might go, and it does. Three run shot, 17th for Manny. It's 4-1. David Ortiz drops one into the right field corner. That's a double. Five straight hits for the Sox. How about Kevin Millar? Everybody wants in on this party. Shallow center field, Ortiz around with the sixth straight hit. Millar, it's 5-1 Red Sox. Jack McKeon, well, I've seen enough. Pavano gets the hook. Got nobody out. Face six batters. So we go to Michael Tejera. Ah, not much better. Trot Nicks in the base hit. Still nobody out. That is seven in a row for the Sox. And there is number seven standing on first. Next batter, Billy Miller. Oh, you don't want Miller in that situation. So you go to the number nine guy. It's Jason Veritek, right? Well, everybody is getting through on this night. Up the middle, Millar in, Nixon in. It is 7 nothing. Both Sox, we batted around, and I remind you, there are no outs in the inning. Damon back up now. It is 7-44, 24 minutes later, and this one off the right field wall. Miller and Veritek scored Damon with a triple. It's 9-1. to Still, nobody out. So, Walker coming back up for his second try of the inning, and yeah, base hit. 11 straight batters reach base. Ten runs before an out recorded. That is a new Major League record. Here comes McKeon again to the pen. Tahara gave up four hits, got nobody out, and Nomar is the first GOAT of the evening. A mock boo from the crowd. Oh, you know they're loving that. It's 10 to 1. <laughs> then, well, it's 13 to 1 now, and, and this is uh, Johnny for the third time up. Base is loaded. Yeah, that's uh, not close to the plate. Miller is out, but the damage is done. 14 to 1 Sox after one. Damon was 5 for 7. Bottom 7, it's 20 to 5. Ow. Kevin Olson takes it right off the noggin. Walker swinging the bat, hitting it hard. Of course, Red Sox fan remembering the Bryce Flory incident a couple years back. This one looked terrible but good news to report not seriously injured they did take Olsen to the hospital but he is listed in good condition so that is at least some good news to come out of a miserable night all around for the for the Marlins you know that Walker the guy who hits the baseball you hate seeing that a lot of concern as he is carted off the field respirator being provided but again not serious however the players don't know this at the time and things get ugly Blaine Neal nails David Ortiz both teams warned after this of course the game is completely out of hand and well it's getting that way in more ways than one Ortiz on the ground for a couple of minutes he would stay in the game the Sox get four more runs in the eighth it's now 24 to 6 in the eighth inning and Todd Walker to left Miller gonna tag up and score call it a sack fly to make it 25 6 running up the score hmm, more on that in the moment top nine Hector Almonte behind Andy Fox again the bench is clear and no punches thrown a lot to talk about Jack McKeon your thoughts did the Sox run it up on you we were worried we were, heck we got to the point late in the game we were when they had a 20 run lead we were worried about whether we're going to squeeze or not you know <laughs> no I don't think we'll forget it I think it's just uh, I hope we can do something about it I might even question that a little bit myself, but but when a guy hits a, a sacrifice fly, they got a chance to score, they're going to take it. They're going to take the opportunity. It's on that bat. It's, it's how these guys get paid. Have a little consideration for the other team, you know? Don't rub it in. And like I said, I take uh, my hats off to Grady Little because I know that's not his style. So here are the records set or tied by the Sox on Friday. Also of note here, the Marlins becoming the first team since 1973 to have the first two pitchers of the game fail to record an out. Oh, by the way, that 73 team was the Royals, also managed by Jack McKee. One, two on, two out. Scott Spezio, frozen. But John Lackey was matching zeros with Kay Brown, facing Alex Cora in the top of the sixth inning, and he gets him waving. Bottom seven, man on third now with two outs. David Eckstein dropped to the ninth spot in the lineup, responding, going gapward. Battle plate, a run, one nothing Angels. Eckstein all the way into third with a triple. He can fly. Brown, not so happy. He would be less happy after the next batter, Jeff Devanin. Grounded to second. Cora 
Nice effort, but cannot make the play in time. Eckstein scores to make it 2 0 Angels. Brown went seven innings, giving up two earned, four strikeouts. Top eight, first and second. Brendan Donnelly in relief. Cesar is tourist. Lines out to Adam Kennedy. The easy flip for the DP inning over. Troy Percival on to close it in the ninth. Over Cabrera, last chance. Uh, no, he's going to go down waving 96 miles an hour. Angels take it three to nothing. More from Cali, battle by the Bay A's and Giants from Pac Bell this time. That's right. Network Associates out in the distance. Top third, no score. Miguel Tejada to Jose Cruz Jr. Nice grab, and he hangs on. Oh, wait, he's not done. Doubles up Scott Hatterberg for good measure. And even Tejada's like, Yo, dog, you the man. Bottom third, no score. Cruz Jr. says, I got leather and I got lumber too. Solo shot off Ted and Lilly. Cruz is 12, there's one nothing Giants. Bottom six, three nothing Giants. Barry, oh, into the cove. Number 364 for his career, and it's four nothing Giants. Take another look at it. Into the cove on the fly, 442 feet. Number 21 for Barry on the season. Top nine, it's 6-0 Giants. Jerome Williams facing Ramon Hernandez. Ball game. Williams' first career shot out. Giants win at 6-0. Williams graduated from high school just four years ago. Shut out the first for Giants rookie since Mike Remlinger back in 1991. Phillies know is playing a whole, whole lot of baseball in Baltimore. Top 13, one, more. one out. First base is open, so you're going to put him on. Sure, may as well walk the bases loaded. That sets up a double play. And now that'll bring in Buddy Groom. Buddy Groom coming in out of the pen. Talk to me, Buddy Groom. First pitch, Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, that's a good managerial decision. Five, two, three, DP. Rollins, one for eight. O's out of the inning. Top 15 now. Omar Dahl, he's a starter, but he's got to work in relief because, well, they're running out of pitchers. Pat Burrell, little comebacker, Dahl, gloves, doubles off Nick Punto, and the Punto here is the O's are out of the inning. Aye, we play on again. The clock strikes midnight Eastern. This game started 7.05 Eastern time. Bottom 15, two outs. How desperate are the O's for a run? They're sending B.J. Surhoff second stolen base of the year, and it works. All right, same at bat. Jeff Conine doesn't make it stick. Dan Plesak gets in. The O's can't buy a run. This one's so long that this poor little fella couldn't make it, but Daddy refuses to take him home. 17th inning. Oh, we got some offense. Jason Michaels, a three-run shot off of Dahl, and that is the difference. The Phillies finally win at 4-2, to two, 5 hours, 41 minutes. Juan Gonzalez had three days to peruse travel books, spend some quality time on MontrealNow.com, and do some general soul-searching. His soul told him to stay put. Gonzalez nixing a proposed trade to the Expos because he says Texas is a very special place for him. Of course, his legs probably told him the same thing. Gonzalez not a fan of the artificial turf at Olympic Stadium. Plus, Montreal can't give him the contract extension he so desperately desires. Gonzalez still not in the starting lineup Friday against the Strohs. David Matranga wasn't either, but he was going to pinch hit. Just called up for Jeff Kent, but Adam Everett with two outs, grounds to short, so Matranga will have to wait at least another couple innings. Top five, it's 3 2 Houston. A Rod with a man aboard. That's off the wall. And Hank Blaylock coming around to score. Rodriguez all the way to third with a triple. He was one for three, would then score on a sack fly. It is 4 3 Texas. Bottom five, Matranga gets his chance now. Pinch hitting for Nate Bland. His first big league at bat. Oh, that's one for the books. Mom is so proud. 86th player in Major League history to homer in his first big league at bat. We are tied at four. Batting average 1,000, slugging percentage 1,000. It's all perfect right now. Top seven, 5-4 Rangers, Rafi Palmero. You're my boy, Blue. Upper deck, 18th of the year for Rafi. 5.08 for his career. He drove in four, 51 RBI now. It's 4-8-4. Top nine, Gonzalez pinch hitting, and that's anticlimactic. Billy Wagner walks him. Tim Kirchin, tell us, will Juan be gone for Ian bragging rights in Toronto? Roy Halladay looking for his 12th straight win, facing the Expos for the second time in a week. We simply have to win the pitcher. I like facing teams for the second time. Uh, I feel like I have a little better idea of, of uh, maybe what I want to do. Apparently not good enough idea. He struggled early. Orlando Cabrera knocking it right center field. That'll play Andy Chavez, RBI number 45 for Cabrera. Expos get two in the first off of Halliday. Top three. It is 3-2 Montreal. They've come back one-on-one -on -one out. 
Will Cordero, left field and not playable. Seventh of the season for Cordero. He was two for four. Montreal up 5-2 after three. Bottom four now with one out. Reed Johnson, center field. And Chavez with total disregard for baseball fundamentals. Yes. Ball bounces away. Johnson would end up at third base. We're going to need another look at that. What the heck happened here to Andy Chavez? Not exactly the Andy all be all of center fielders here. Well, it actually hits him in the face after the bounce. A little embarrassment on top of it. Bottom five, Vernon Wells. All's Wells that ends Wells. Number 20 on the year. He was two for four. Extends his history to 19 games. Jays within 5-4. Bottom eight now, 5-5, five, five, two outs. Halliday gets Brian Schneider out of the inning. Gave up five runs in eight innings. No decision. Bottom nine, fives everywhere. Bases loaded, one out. Julio Mayon, are you kidding me? He walks home the winning run. That's it. Johnson scores as Shannon Stewart gets the base on balls, and the Jays take it 6-5. to five. Sweet Lou lashed out at Ben Grieve for comments made by the outfielder after he struck out to end Thursday's game. If there's one thing Pinella will not tolerate, it's apathy. Grieve wants his manager and his teammates to know, in this case, perception is not reality. I think at the time he was so frustrated, he honestly thought that I was up there with a lackluster attitude when I struck out. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I was even going to be coming to the field today, you know, after all that stuff that happened yesterday. I, I was ready for a call saying, all right, you know, we're going to have to let you go. So I, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect coming to the field today. I didn't know to come and get dressed or wait for a phone call or what. So I'm here and saw my name in the lineup, so I'll just treat it like it's another day. Sweet Lou's kids welcoming the Braves to town and Grieve in the lineup despite his concerns that he might not even be invited back to the ballpark. Here's what happened on Thursday, bottom of the ninth inning. Mariano Rivera strikes out Grieve and Pinella furious that Ben didn't challenge the call. So we go back to Friday now. Horacio Ramirez on a 1-2 count. Looks like strike three. Called a ball by Lance Barksdale. Bobby Cox now upset. We take another look. Could have been a strike, but Grieve is still there and he makes it stick. Double to the gap, scoring Terry Shumpert. Greaves only hit in three at bats. 4-2 Braves, and well, Cox still not a happy guy, and uh, he's had his share of tirades this season as well. Top five we go, still a 4-2 game. Larry Jones, you call him chipper. Off of Jeremy Gonzalez, two-run shot, 13th of the year for Jones. It's 6-2 Braves. Top nine, Carlos Reyes serving it up to the chef. Gary Sheffield, solo shot. His 22nd, he was two for four, and the Braves up seven to two, but they're not done. How about Andrew Jones from Curacao? 20th of the season, a laugher for Atlanta. Jones three for five, Braves win it eight to two. It's an Ohio thing, Reds in Cleveland, and look who's there, it's LeBron, fresh from the draft, calling his shot at batting practice. Uh-huh, I think he was pointing to shortstop. Let's just hope the J works out better than that. LeBron playing to the crowd. <laughs> to throw the ceremonial first pitch to C.C. Sabathia. You know, they later exchanged digits. LeBron said, yo, hit me on the cell. I'm in town now. Top of the six, no score. Billy Traber facing Ken Griffey Jr. with two outs. It's Jr. down looking. He would go 0 for 4, three strikeouts on the day. Traber, five Ks and seven innings of work. Didn't allow any runs. Jr. didn't like it. Bottom seven, no score. Runner on third, Jody Garrett at bat. That's in the corner, off the wall. Here comes Milton Bradley. Indians go up 1-0, and they hang on to win it. Kind of, kind of, three zip. Arrow pitching to Lyle Overbay. Overbay making the most of his opportunity. Carlos Baerga and Steve Finley coming around. And the game all knotted up to two. Bottom five, John Patterson pitching to Dimitri Young. Up the middle, Matt Cada Give me some glove. Nice play to nail Young at first. Top seven, tied at three, bases loaded. Bernero. Oh. Wow, pitch. Chad Moeller coming in to score from third. D-backs take the lead. They're going to win an 8-3. First nine-game win streak for them since August of 2001. So the D-backs now 17-6 and six in June, even though they've been racked by injury. The reason? The play of a few surprising rookies. Cato, who showed you with a great play in the field. Overbay, who showed you with a great play at the plate. And Rob Hammer, they've combined to hit 302 with 24 RBI this month. Some big names there. Rockies Pirates, Jason Jennings with a four-game win streak coming in. Bottom three, two aboard, and Jason Kendall. No regard for that win streak at all. Single to center field. Preston Wilson coming up throwing. Jeff Rebele trying to score, and he is safe. Oh, looked out. Looked like the throw beat him. 
Daryl Cousins with the call. Charles Johnson certainly thought it was an out. Let's take another look, shall we? We solicit the aid of an arrow, and oh, goodness. The ball's on the floor. You cannot record an out, but the ball is on the ground. So we move on, top five, Juan Uribe. Look at Kenny Lofton. Still can go get it with a basket catch, no less. Style points, Uribe one for five. Two one bucks, top five. Runners at first and second. Fly to center, and Lofton, well, communication the key to any good relationship. Helton, by the way, one for five. Still stuck on 199 career homers. Pirates win 5-3. Record in baseball pods, the second worst. Doesn't seem fair. Joel Pinheiro allowed 13 first inning runs in 15 starts. So we look at his first inning. Mark Katze, right back to the box. Katze 0 for 3. Your next batter, Mark Loretta. And Pinheiro gets him with a yacker. Ground out to second. Loretta 0 for 4. What about Ryan Klesko? Come on, make the graphic look good. No, doesn't do it. Ground ball to first. John Olerud makes the play. Pinheiro's first 1 2 3 first inning of the season. Top two we go. Still scoreless. Two aboard for Rondell White. Please help me, Rondell. Towering fly ball, right field. It's in foul territory. Old we're going out, Brett Boone, and there's Ichiro coming in and making a play. Bottom four, still no score, but Seattle native Adam Eaton in some trouble. Randy Wynn with a sacks pack. Should have been a double play. Ay, Donaldo Mendez misplays the throw. Edgar Martinez in, Olerud in, 2 nothing Seattle. Bottom five, it's now 4-2. Olerud stroking it right field. Boone hustling all the way from second. Beats the throw. All over two for four. Pinheiro wins his third straight. 8-2 Mariners. At the Metro Dome, Brewers and Twins. We don't mean to pick on Dustin Moore, but it wasn't a good night for him. Top four, Brewers up 2-0. Kyle Lowe's facing Brooks Kiesnick with two runners on. And Kiesnick with a base hit. Scoring Richie Sexton. That's our man Moore out there. He can't get to that one. John Vanderwall coming in to score on the error. And the Brewers up 4-0. But... There was more, or maybe less for more, facing Matt Kinney. Now runners on first and third into the 6-4-3 DP. And then, well, then he, fa he falls down, tumbling over first base. He would be okay. Top seven, Brewers up 6-1. Sexton facing Johan Santana. Two men on, that makes this a three-run home run. Number 22 for Sexton. Brewers up 9-1. to one. Top nine, Royce Clayton facing Mike Nakamura. Over Moore's glove. It's just a bad night all around. Brewers win it 13 to 1. Sorry, Dustin.